following the culture of coffee in the land of Nagas and beyond, the rest of the world. centuries has been used as a blend by the European coffee industry and so if anything happens to Indian coffee farmers they just chuck it out and replace easily with Indonesian or Brazilian Robusta that has been the case for a very long time up until 1990 when the government of India decided that we will decentralize it we make ensure that there is some fair trade going on that everybody every grower has every right to make an informed decision and decide what quality of coffee they want to produce and at what price they want to sell and when they want to sell to whom they want to sell this is one of the most beautiful thing that has ever happened to our Indian coffee scene and as we all know how India has managed to exchange aircraft from Russia with coffee you know there's a lot of crazy things and, and, and globally speaking coffee is the second highest traded commodities after petroleum this is a crazy thing it can really revolutionize our economy but my friends I'm here to also warn us that this could be exploitative how uh, you see how if Indian coffee is so popular or Naga coffee is so popular it's good. I mean, directly, indirectly, we get a benefit. If Assam coffee, Meghalaya coffee, Manipur coffee, if all of these coffees are popular, it's great, but it could still be exploitative, given the fact that anybody can use this as a cash word and build a billion dollar company without having to benefit our growers back at home. And we're not saying we don't, we don't open up doors for the MNCs, they should surely, but it should go. And uh, it has, it, it is in, in, in India, this is the fifth year. Uh, that we have been doing and more than uh, uh, 18 to 21 cities every year want to participate, want to host us. So year after year we have been looking like how um, this brings the entire community together. Okay, And one of the very essence that I want to share is uh, it's a very very fun event. You know, uh, it's a very fun event but this is the most formal setting this year I have seen, you know. So it is okay if you smile, it's okay if you laugh, it's okay if you play music, you, you, you show your dance moves, it's absolutely fine, okay. It's a very chilled out competition. More than uh, anything else, you know, be here to, even for the participants, just enjoy what you're doing. Yeah? Enjoy the process, whether you win or not, end of the day, coffee wins, community wins, we all are winning. You know, and uh, so happy that Nagaland is finally on the map. You know, now it it uh, in the Aero Press it also says Kohima. You know, that's it, it gets printed uh, and sent from the team World Aero Press Championship. So happy that that is happening. And a uh, uh, couple of rules for the participants is uh, I will go with three numbers. Uh, this is the cup that you will be serving it. Uh, to the judges, it has to be. So we are here today with uh, the winners of the first Nagaland Chapter Region Aeropress Championship 2022. So these are the first, second, and third, the gold, silver, and the bronze winner. So we'll have we'll have a short interaction with them. How has been their experience for the first ever championship in the region? So can you kindly introduce yourself first and how has been the experience? Uh, in this first championship, Aeropress championship. 
Well, my name is Mian Zheng Dongwei, uh, and I would like to thank my sister and his co colleague for teaching me how to make uh, aeropress. Okay. So how and was it was nice. Uh, made new people and learned a lot about coffee. So you are the second, second right? Yes. Second. Second. The silver, silver winner. Yes. So uh, this is the first championship that has been ever held here in the region. Yes. So um, how long has been? How long you have been? Uh, you know, like brewing. Uh... Brewing though, I did last week only. Okay. <laughs> Just last week, and you are now the silver. <laughs> Silver champion, right? Uh, yes, okay. but uh, I do barista also. That's why uh, I know a little about it, All about right. uh, coffee. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. So we have the winner here. So can you introduce yourself and tell us more about your experience and you know how long you have been brewing also? and tell us about today's championship. Um, all right, so hi, my name is Esther Mulville Pesau and I belong to Chakasan community. And uh, I've been working with Eto Coffee for almost three years now. I'll be completing my three years uh, this month on 30th of September. And yeah, uh, I haven't been brewing for long now. I just uh, started practicing brewing uh, this year only because I underwent, I, I was mostly um, uh, serving, so I was mostly stick with the hospitality sector. However, I underwent the barista training and I just started brewing this year only. And I, first of all, I would like to thank Almighty God for helping me and also my team for being there, for being supportive and encouraging and teaching me every now and then. And also, uh, I would like to thank the national organizers for bringing this amazing platform here in Naglen. And honestly, I really don't have a word to express how I'm feeling right now. I'm just... No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I, it still feels like a dream, but thank you to everyone. It was a wonderful experience. Thank you. So we have the bronze uh, winner here. So can you kindly tell us about yourself and are you based in Kohima or where have you, have you been practicing? Okay. Uh, my name is Watha and I'm from Futuro. So I ran a cafe just two months ago. So yes. So that's all yeah, I would say. Been my experience today? You know, participating. Uh, it's been uh, amazing since like I've been browsing, uh, doing. I haven't done much about this, but because of our sister Esther, she insisted me to come. So because of that, like I would like to thank even her. So how are you looking forward, you know, uh, in future also, you know, like coffee is now booming in our state also. So how are you looking forward, you know, like leaving other jobs and, you know, uh, taking up uh, brewing or, you know, being in, in, the, in this uh, coffee uh, thing? Uh, well, actually, coffee is very new, I'd say. But uh, in, for the past few years, we could uh, witness that coffee, coffee culture has been growing. And I believe that if one works with passion and integrity, um, coffee could uh, be a real career. And I believe you can earn a livelihood by just doing coffee. Yeah. Anything you, need to, you want to say? Mm, no. Anything? Okay. Anything you want to say, you have, you have just started, you know, you are a startup and uh, as a, you know, like coffee lover, I believe. So how are you looking forward to uh, in your future? How you are going to run your business? Uh, I would like to promote the coffee culture in my own hometown since they don't know about the coffee culture. So I want to promote the coffee as well. Thank you so much for being with us. Congratulations once again and all the best for your new venture. We now he, uh, have here with us uh, Mr. Lee Chan Hunzoi, uh, who is the founder and the CEO of Ete Coffee. And as we know, like coffee is now starting starting to boom in our state. Also, let us uh, try to get to know more about you know how he has been doing, how his journey had been, and regarding today's uh, event that is the Region Nagaland uh, Chapter Aeropress Championship 2022. So let us uh, get to know more about uh, the uh, champion also, championship about today also. So Lichen, can you tell us more about, you know, the, your journey in, the, in this coffee culture? And uh, after that, if you can share with us about today's championship also. Right, right. So um, 
My, my journey started back in 2016, uh, 2nd of July. That was when uh, we, I, I founded this uh, company called Ete Coffee, which is a roasting company, which uh, happened to be the first specialty coffee roasting company from Northeast India. And ever since then, um, yes, the culture as a whole, if you talk about coffee culture, it's not just me. Like I um, would always mention, uh, like a friend of mine, Dili, he's the one who brought the full-fledged modern-day cafe. Uh, like a friend of mine, Vivito, he is among the Nagas, the first one to be exporting green coffee. And then comes the Coffee Board of India that has been always there since uh, early 80s. And also the Department of Land Resources who have gone massive plantation in 15, 16, uh, you know, in just five, six years' time. So uh, I think it was just at the right time that we all got into this. Uh, we are most part into value addition sector. Uh, but we, my personal uh, quest is also the research. So a lot of uh, our resources has been and time has been gone into researching. So we have four research farm. We run a coffee laboratory services uh, besides the, the, the coffee production house and cafes. And we run a coffee school. Um, the, the reason being because research is what will take us far, that's what I believe. So I spend a good amount of time in researching and uh, in education sector. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we see like uh, we have lots of entrepreneurs coming up in our state also. But uh, what we see, you know, lately has been like there has not been much of a research. Uh, you know, like they don't do research, but they just want to start up something, something different or something new or, you know, like any other person start up anything. So. What do you see like this coffee culture? Because this is very new to us in our society. So how do you see this uh, culture in future? How do, how, and how are you going to take it along, you know, like in the future also, this coffee? And do you, are you getting any support from mm -hmm. the government sector also? How has been the, how has uh, government been helpful, you know, right. in your research and, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, culture is to do with the society. So we are just doing our small part to let's say we happen to be pioneers all of us whoever is here today so our responsibility is to ensure that we do our coffee the right way scientific way um, uh, that's the only thing we can do uh, in terms of so the culture as a whole it is the people who would respond to it so there's a massive wave of uh, coffee culture going on in Nagaland right now uh, and, and my my I, I, my dream my wish is that Gohima or Nagaland become one of the hubs of coffee in the world um, so it's really up to the people and a lot of people are getting into it uh, most part is because of FOMO fear of missing out but some people they really want to do it uh, since you also mentioned about research um, not everyone perhaps is called to get into research so it is okay for some of us to just take off from what is left and start a good business uh, some are called to be uh, researchers so I think it's just fine uh, for anybody to explore in different ways uh, when it comes to the government support, obviously, uh, what else can we ask? They are doing massive. A plantation is really big. And uh, just because my company's vision uh, is to challenge ourselves, to prove it to ourselves that uh, we can start a thriving business without the help from the government or financial institution, that doesn't mean others should not take help. So, and that doesn't mean that the government is not ready. The government is always encouraging growers. In fact, uh, in the recent years, couple of years' time, the Department of Land Resources have uh, promoted uh, cafes ac across Nagaland. Every single headquarters, they have uh, distributed a free machine to start a cafe. So the government is doing a lot. Coffee Board of India is doing a lot. And I think even other departments like horticulture, uh, the entire society, I think it's really, it's a golden era if you talk about coffee culture in Nagaland, right? So, so I think the support is coming from every direction. And most of all, thanks to the consumers. If not for them, we are jobless, right? So uh, some people, uh, I mean, most people who walk in not necessarily like our product, maybe. Uh, it might be my cafe or somebody else's cafe, but sometimes they also want to support the movement, right? So uh, it's a good thing going on. I'm very positive that uh, a few years later, we could become the powerhouse of one of the coffee research center in sub-Indian continent or maybe even beyond, you know? So that's my, that's my wish. I really wish that come true, yeah. Let us hope so, yes. that can happen. Yes. And one thing, it's not just about, you know, like um, the co consumer supporting you, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you being the founder, the CEO of Ete Coffee, you have been, you know, training youngsters also, giving employment. So, so far, what are the, you know, like different uh, ways 
that you have engaged the youngsters, you know, trying to let them also know more about this also. You have been doing different, different activities also. Can you highlight a little bit about right, the activities right. that you have been carrying out? Right. I think it's not just me or us inspiring the other, uh, you know, friends or someone younger to us, but we inspire each other. Uh, so I would like to first establish the fact that we are all doing our bits and, you know, a small uh, part here and there. Uh, when it comes to our work, we, uh, like I said, we run a Goffield Laboratory Services, which uh, this year we have about 147 uh, coffee farmers who have signed up with us. Uh, it's a self-funded project. Um, uh, so it might not be massive, but what we're trying to do is we want to keep track of every single uh, event that is happening from the farm level, be it rain, be it any kind of, um, uh, for, let, let's say, from flowering, from picking, from processing, so that we know exactly what actually went wrong or what works. If it works, then we want to translate the best practices for the next season, at least a minimum of five years, so that we know uh, what works and what don't uh, for us. So that for us means like it's massive, actually. So we are not obligating these growers to sell it to us. They can go and sell it to anyone, but the idea is that the growers must be making informed decision. Uh, so they need to be empowered in terms of how they can also do coffee. Uh, also assess their own quality of coffee as well. So uh, that's one part we're doing. Um, and another thing is the coffee school. Uh, along with the coffee school, we also have a um, uh, consultancy service where we help cafes too. So we have helped around 11 cafes, which we just uh, uh, directly helped in the Are sense in in Nagaland, in Nagaland, and of course in Manipur too. So we uh, that's a free service where we try to help um, in terms of the uh, technical specification, how you can lay out your cafe, procurement of machine. So we also sell machine. What we do is the commission we get, we give them as a discount to our local entrepreneurs, um, and then. Uh, uh, when it comes to school, what we do is we are training, uh, basically, if we see from a business perspective, actually, we are training our competitors. Uh, it's counterintuitive to think that you are training your competitors in your same industry, but I believe that all of us Nagas or anyone living in Nagaland doing coffee should do excellent coffee. So when a tourist walk into Nagaland, they shouldn't be looking for where is this cafe ABC. It should be like, go to any Naga cafe, they do excellent coffee. Because I believe that that's the only way to promote this culture and that's the only way to attract global customers. Because our customer market base is very small in Nagaland. So only if we grow together and make this a hub together, uh, people from across the globe become our customer, they become our market. So, uh, yeah, this is our small effort that we are trying to push out there. Uh, so people should become the brand, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, just one more before we go to the competition. Yes. Can you tell us more about, you know, the difference between the coffee that uh, are grown here and the co coffee that we get out from outside Nagaland okay. or other others? Okay. Uh, so, uh, there are two types. I mean, uh, before I even go... One is like the instant coffee, one is the natural coffee, the natural way of doing coffee. So I would talk about uh, the natural way of doing coffee, meaning using the natural beans uh, as such. Um, so there are so many great coffees, uh, like uh, Costa Rica, Godamilla, uh, obviously Ethiopian coffee, a lot of great coffees out there. And everybody claims that their coffee is the best, obviously everybody is patriotic. Uh, so yes, absolutely, we are good, uh, our coffee is... Um, so no, what is interesting is not like who is the best, but it's about how unique, how complex, how interesting is your coffee. I think people are also looking for something that interests them in that sense. Uh, all we have to look at right now is uh, naturally, because ours is mostly high altitude, so it gives you a very complex character in that sense. may not be so profuse and commercially uh, really loud, um, profuse like others, but it is very unique. And so all we have to do now is, since the nature is already providing this, uh, our human effort in terms of how we plan, how we process, how we um, uh, take care of uh, harvesting and all of that, if we put our effort, I'm sure it will stand out at the world level. Already there are. And it's not just, uh, like I said, it's not just, just me. There are other people who are already doing too. Uh, the government is pushing already. So, um, yeah, that's how I would put it, uh, our coffee in, the, uh, in that level, right? We are unique.
yes, you know, yes. Or Nagaland coffee stands out of other coffee. Sure, yeah? sure, sure, sure. Okay, now coming back to this Aeropress competition today. Yeah. So can you tell us more about this uh, in brief, explaining about this and um, the winners of today, like they'll be participating in the national level right, also. Right. So can you tell us more about this? Yeah. yeah. This is the first of its time. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first time we are having a Northeast Regionals. Um, and, and thankfully we have Assam uh, friend coming to participate, which is really encouraging. Uh, we hosted last year actually because of um, uh, the Odin incident we have to in protest against the government, meaning uh, the atrocities. We decided to call it off, but this year uh, we finally, it took shape finally. And uh, so this Aeropress actually is a world championship title. So in the world uh, championship level, we have baristas, we have rosters, we have brewers, we have latte art championship. And this Aeropress championship is also really big. Uh, so uh, it has been happening across the globe in about 60 countries, over 60 countries, and in India since 2018. So uh, yeah, so finally it's here uh, locally. Um, our winners will now go and compete in the national levels in Bangalore. And if they win, they're just one step away to the world championship. So we are excited about it. And the reason why we do Aeropress Championship is not just the competition. It's not about who won, but I believe that it will push our Naga Baristas to get down to the foundation. Uh, I think that's what we always lack, our people especially. Uh, we're all lazy people. We know how to make up on the surface, starting from me. So I think this will also push us to get down to details, the nitty-gritty of it, the science behind it. Uh, so professionalism will be pro promoted through this competition. So I, that is one thing that really excites me when I think about this kind of competition. Yeah. Uh, so finally, you pull off the first, you know, like championship here in your own cafe here. Right, so right. congratulations again. Thank, thank you for thank your you. time with us. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. One more. Um, all the way from Guwahati, so can you kindly introduce yourself to our viewers and the experience that you had uh, in today's competition and how long you have been into this culture? Okay, so my name is Raj, I'm from Guwahati. Uh, I've traveled yesterday to Nagaland to participate in the first ever Northeast Regional uh, Indian Aeropress Championship. Uh, well. Uh, professionally or anything, I'm not in, involved in coffee and everything. My profession is different, but then I'm into coffee for the last 10, 12 years. Yeah, so, yeah. So, when I, I heard that there's a competition uh, that involves uh, Aeropress Championship, so I just thought maybe it will be a good uh, idea to have, uh, you know, experience one of these things because in Northeast, it can, I can say that the coffee culture is just budding. This burning, right? So in the uh, rest of the India, it's way be behind, be beyond us, right? So the thing is, uh, I just wanted to come, participate, see how it feels like, how is the uh, environment, and I'm not disappointed at all. Yeah, I had a great time, great experience. Looking forward for more of such a championship in the future. And uh, I'm, I hope more people will come up, show up coming years onwards because this culture is growing. I think more people should come together, build a community, as uh, other people are saying. Yeah. That is it, basically. And I'm going with lots of good memories and good people. I met very good people, Ate Coffee, very, very much. I always heard about Ate Coffee before in Guwahati, finally met them in person. It's a very good experience, very happy. Yeah. So, uh, one more question. Yeah. So, uh, you have been in this field for 10 years, right? Yeah, yes. So. You know, like in Guwahati or in Assam in general, like as per your uh, perspective or as per your experience that you have seen, so how is coffee culture, you know, in your society? Also? Well, uh, there are two things to, to keep in mind, I think. Uh, first, there is specialty coffee and there is like normal coffee in general. If you ask a people in, uh, I guess, in lots of the part of the northeast, not, not, not only in Guwahati, like about coffee, they'll go ahead with instant coffee and everything, right? So the thing, the concept of specialty coffee, I think it should be introduced to the people because, because lots of the people I have met, they don't even know that we have good amount of good percentage of coffee farms in Northeast, which goes unrecognized because there is no market. As of now, there is no uh, consumers, you can say. We are basically prioritizing the tea culture more over chai culture more over it. So, uh, what I'm saying is we don't have to compete with the tea drinkers and everything. If we, if people come to know that we have good 
uh, farms, good uh, good percentage of farms actually in north in uh, northeast, not only in Nagaland, in Assam, Manipur, uh, some in Miz Mizoram, everything. So I think uh, in coming years, perhaps I'm hoping, I'm hoping the specialty specialty coffee goes beyond what right now is right now. But uh, if I can say that in the last five years, perhaps the demand is growing. In Northeast, the demand is definitely growing. People are coming up to more interested. People are joining this coffee coffee community, specialty coffee community, definitely. So, But yeah, we need more people like Li Chan himself, who is promoting this uh, specialty coffee to such a great extent, right? So yeah, hoping to see the community grow as a whole. Yeah. yeah. Let's hope that uh, you participate more on such Definitely, coffee. definitely. This is your first participation? Yes, definitely. Coffee? Yes, first, first first participation in any coffee contest. Right, yes, right. yes. Yeah, yeah. Hope yeah. to see you more in Definitely. The, uh, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. So you Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, we are here at uh, Ede Coffee uh, here in Kohima where the first ever Northeast uh, Region Aeropress Championship 2022 has been held. And we have the three winners out of the 10 participants. And uh, the three winners will be now competing to the national level, uh, national level Aeropress Championship. And we look forward that um, they also win uh, among the national level also, so that people get to know more about uh, Nagaland coffee and how our youngsters have also been doing here. So this is the first ever Northeast Region Aeropress Championship competition that has been held here in, in Kohima, which is called the Kohima Chapter. With uh, Kevilele Mehta, this is Laurini Sanglao reporting for Anal TV. Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For Dumapu viewers, we are on channel number 994 in Global Chapter and Kohima and Mokokchong viewers. Switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital. For all news and updates, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter.